Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. We're at part 22 of the Final Fantasy IV Let's Play. It's time for the final battle of the game, ladies and gentlemen. But it looks like Fusoya and Golbez have already got here before us. <laughs> I caught a fish that was this big. <laughs> What's your assessment of this Golba Sprite. <laughs> Zemus remembers. Zemus remembers when Golba was this big. <laughs> look at that. Look at that chrome dome. <laughs> well, we, we could we could we can generalize from this battle that Zemus has pretty fucking high magical defense. <laughs> well, I do like in the uh, in the American SNES version of the game when the uh, Golbez and Fusia are just like, we have to cast Meteor now, and Zemus is... Silly. Rah, rah, fight the pyre. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the body dies, the spirit lives on, but, but the body died. <laughs> yeah, right. the spirit lives on too. Ow. <laughs> he just realized it was floating in the midair. Easiest final boss ever, I must say. Uh, after or before? Uh, oh. If you lose to that, you fucking suck. <laughs> oh, look at that. The body even incinerates itself. No cleanup. <laughs> Fuck, I never saw a corpse that exploded upon death. No, wait, Metal Gear Solid did. Metal Gear Solid 3 did that. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> so it looks like Zemus, the Zemus' death only caused it to become even stronger, and now it's Zeromus. <laughs> Hell to pay. <laughs> Simpsons did it first. <laughs> so cool, best of us here doing what they do best, just spamming the strongest spell in the game. Don't you love that enemy that just says "fuck you"? I don't care about Ultima. Yeah. Well, I, I don't use Ultima or Ruby. <laughs> uh, I use Hades on it first to stop it. Yeah. So apparently there's a crystal item? Where'd that come from? Oh, okay. Well, kinda would like a little backstory to that first. <laughs> hey, what do you have? He's made of ice cream. <laughs> okay, so Meteor didn't do shit. Zeromus has just knocked out our two best uh Oops. Yeah. And uh we're all kissing the mirror. What to do now? I like to imagine that's just there just kicking the rock. All rise for the final fantasy anthem. The fact that it's gonna give us strength. I actually uh I actually did like how twelve bought uh, brought this iteration of the theme back. It pretty much just orchestrated the four version of the theme. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, uh, you see, what I keep forgetting is that 12 was in the anniversary title, wasn't it? Pretty much. But what was it, 20th anniversary, or was it... Uh, when did 12 come out? 2000 
Let's do Google. <laughs> First Google? Then we're gonna fuck Yahoo. <laughs> so with the the power of 2006. I think I think it was an anniversary game though. Cause I think the first Final Fantasy debuted in '86. Yeah, 20 years, 30 years. So that's probably why they brought back a lot of uh, little callbacks there. Okay, final battle of the game, ladies and gentlemen. The battle always starts off with uh, everyone's prayers reviving all of your characters. Um, you know, everyone's pretty much just gonna talk to you, give you some. Morales. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Your fault. Everyone's giving us moral support. You left me alone. <laughs> I wanted to see this is why I wanted to go to the moon. <laughs> I gotta say though, even after uh, this game came out in ninety one, uh, over twenty years later, this is actually still one of my favorite uh, final boss backdrops uh, in the history of Final Fantasy. I, I don't know, it's just so... There's no reason for it to be like this, but... Yeah, but I, I just really love the background in this battle. Yeah. So, alright, so... Zeromus, in this first phase, doesn't do a goddamn thing. The only thing it does is shake. Yeah, you use the crystal to really initialize the fight. God damn. Um, but it, during the meantime, you can, before you actually use the crystal to really start the battle, you can, you know, buff your, your party members with Protect, Shell, Haste, you know, you can cast Slow and Zeromus if you want to. It all started with the Big Bang, huh? Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's actually one of my favorite skits I've ever <laughs> And do as much as you can before that, because what? Uh, all right. So, if, how how Zeromus works is that uh, every once in a while he's gonna shake. When he shakes, he's telling you that okay, next turn I'm gonna use Big Bang, which is his most damaging attack. Um, after Big, uh, you can, no, I don't think you can defend Big Bang. I'm pretty there's no point. So what we're having here, Cecil should attack as always. Rosa is gonna be your most important party member. Which she's on. <laughs> Rosa down. Rosa down. Get her back up. Black Hole is a debuffer. It removes all of your buffs uh, from everybody, including Zeromus himself, actually. Uh, so, you know, you're going to lose all of those protection shells that you stacked up, but, you know, it doesn't hurt to buff up in the beginning of the fight anyway. Anyway, um, Zeromus ends up being a bit of a callback to Final Fantasy. It ends up being a uh, summon in Final Fantasy 12. doesn't look anything like this, thank goodness, but... Oh. It even has its signature, signature attack being Big Bang. But that that that's its main attack. Like that's no, it's, a it's a signature attack. Oh, okay. It has a very hard condition to trigger, and its damage output varies depending on how low you your I think it's how low your HP or how low Zeromus's HP is when you cast it. Yeah. No, that's pretty cool. Well, actually. Yeah, you gotta be real. No, what I'm saying is like in a game where enemies can swarm you for like five or six a pop, Zeromus has to be like a 10 HP or so very low to get the maximum damage out of it. Yeah. Well, actually, just a, just a little trivia here. This is actually not the original design of Zeromus. Um, the original design of Zeromus was more mech-like. It had a scimitar, and it had a female in its torso for some goddamn reason. So they went with this design, which looks like somebody started drawing them and then it stopped. Yes. <laughs> it actually took me to the DS version to realize this thing had a face. If you focus on the blue core in the center of the body and move your eyes slightly to the right, you can see its red eye, and, and that's generally where the face is at. So it's like some sort of mutated Tetsuo looking fucking abomination. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, other than that, though, uh, Zeromus will always counter summons with Flare. And, uh, th after that, though, the, re the only other attack he has is Big Bang. I and mean, he'll cast Flare every once in a while. But once you take enough HP away from him, he'll stop using Big Bang and you'll switch it up with Meteor, which actually doesn't do as much damage as Big Bang. So, if anything, the battle gets easier and easier the longer you last, the more you take away from him. Probably used up a lot of his MP4. Yeah. My problem with this fight was is that I didn't know when the fucking stop summoning. 
<laughs> you know, because that, that's the last thing you need right now is Aroma's countering with Flair, and then he follows up with Big Bang. Someone's gonna die. <laughs> so, uh, from, <laughs> you know what? It's one of those th cases where you know the pattern and you still make the colossal fuck up. Yeah. I actually, I probably would have been better off replacing King with Edge in this fight. Nah, uh, Edge would have been eating blue. Eh, well, his HP. But that would have been a very rare find for your um, for your little bestiary of floor textures. Ah, blue <laughs> holy. <laughs> also, gotta say, I really do like the Zermus battle theme here. It's pretty cool shit here. It's a bit of a it's a finger tapper. Yeah, I, th I think that's. If can classify it as anything, yeah, finger tap, or a foot tapper or anything. Uh, this is an uh, it's a bit of a toe tapper, I could say. Pretty cool. If I recommend a, a remix version of it, you can check out the, uh, the, the Black Mages, uh, rock rendition of the theme. It's pretty cool shit. Mm -hmm. I love the Black, you, you listen to the Black Mages? Yeah, I got a few of theirs. Clash on the Big Bridge, stuff like that. Okay, Clash on the Big Bridge. I, I have uh, all three of my, all three of the albums on my iPod. It's really decent. I hope they make a fourth one, really. I do too, but given Square's recent policies lately... Well, Nobu doesn't work for Square anymore. It ain't even that. Given their recent policies with how the hell they charge people nowadays... Oh, you're just talking about their... I'm talking... I'm talking ass... Pulling you're out my ass anarchy. Out. I'm talking <laughs> out my ass anarchy here. No, 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 but you're talking about their recent business practices. Yeah. You, you've, surely you've seen one of the Final Fantasy games they recently produced, which is pay all, to play. All the brave... Constantly. Yeah, yeah, I know. I've seen, I've seen it. I, I know about it. I'm not getting that game. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> no thanks. DLC, the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is actually the point where Zoroma starts casting Meteor all the time, but as you can see, it doesn't do nearly the amount of damage as uh, Big Bang. So you're going to revive everybody now? Yeah, I'm actually going to start using a rise on everybody. I, except Rydia. She can, she can take a nap right now. She's earned it. She's earned it? Yeah, she's earned it. So, you get her parents killed, swallowed by a sea god, hey, that wasn't god our, knows that what else. wasn't our fault. Leviathan ran into us. And the fucking odds of that happening? Well, we, we, we found out earlier. Johnny, I have a better chance of getting it laid. It was on purpose. I have a better chance of getting laid. That, that can't fucking happen unless It was you're... on purpose, but Leviathan's reasoning was never clear. Yeah, Cecil, there you go. No. <laughs> oh, I hate that douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> The world seems to hate Cecil. And he truckers and he trucks through like a soldier to the end. That's why I love Cecil. The world is fucking against them, and he goes, you know what? Fuck you, I'm still doing the right thing. <laughs> and that's that's the final battle, ladies and gentlemen. That's but the it. fire's still there. Where's the fire department? Uh Are you gonna uh, piss it out? Yeah, we're gonna spit it out. I thought uh, you were gonna take a piss on it like Gulliver's travels. Pitui. I see that was easy. Lunarians have holy spit. <laughs> <laughs> meteor spit. You throw a rock at a fire? That's overkill. No, I mean, the meteors come out of your mouth. Oh. <laughs> Perhaps the humans have already evolved past the Lunarians. No, just, just Cecil, who's also a Lunarian. Suck it. <laughs> <laughs> so as long as evil exists... Things like Zeromus will still live on. Well, that just made my adventure pointless. Fuck you. <laughs> so is Zeromus defeated? Everyone's going to head back home. Has Zeromus made another appearance since? Aside from Final Fantasy XII? You want to technically count the after years? He's in after years? In some form or another, I believe. As what, Kane? Mysterious girl? No. No. That actually, rotted sandwich? Uh, <laughs> it's a bad sandwich. <laughs> as long as evil exists within that sandwich, <laughs> Zeromus may come back. Yeah, I can see what Zeromus is cursed, like Montezuma's Revenge. Yeah. Well, okay, on a serious note, yeah, Zeromus does come back. In some form in After Years. Is after what, years actually, uh, No. <laughs> after Years actually does bring back a lot of... Uh, uh, bosses from four. In addition yeah, to the, new four, bosses. the four arc fiends, then the four fiends, I believe. Right? Yeah, mm. they, they 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 bring in bosses from every Final Fantasy game. Ah, uh, so basically the kitchen sink approach. Yeah, mm. in a sense, a sequel to Final Fantasy Four is a fucking kitchen sink. <laughs> but uh, like we said earlier, a we'll, kitchen sink and Theodore's entire character. 
Huh? <laughs> we will not be doing the after years immediately after this. We're going to a different Final Fantasy RPG in general after we complete this game completely. Mm. By the way, I like the I like the bit where this Golvez takes off his armor and reveals himself as Theodore again. Yeah, and the, the and here's story. like Third Rock from the Sun Whee! shit there. <laughs> One born of a dragon, Boop. bearing darkness and light, Boop. shall rise to the heavens Boop. over the still land. Flip to side B. The moon's light eternal <laughs> Boop. brings a promise to the planet. With bounty and grace. Oh, you didn't do a beep in between the. Uh... I could make it in one line. Whee! <laughs> 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 look at the, look at the, the blue plant is so much fun. Flip to side C. <laughs> it's like a merry-go-round. Welcome to side C of a two-sided <laughs> so game. How is that possible? <laughs> After a brief pause, the moon Boop! travels forth, seeking another in search of its radiance. Boop! Though of the same blood, lunar and terrestrial both. Time's march alone. Why did you too beat far that apart. combo and not the other combo? I'm inconsistent. This, this type's this side C is inconsistent. Okay. I'm inconsistent. By the way, if the, if the moon's closer to the planet, it looks like Mickey Mouse. Uh, okay, so we're landing the Luna Whale back to where we got it from. So is everybody out of the Luna Whale at this point, or are we going into the ocean? Apparently, we missed some side quest underwater. It's a stick shift! It's a stick shift! <laughs> Why did we have to sink the lunar whale? It looked very cool. I think it has autopilot. Not answering my question there. Why are we sinking in the first place? It looks cool. How would you like that shit? Come face to face with a giant fucking battle whale. <laughs> We're parking on Leviathan. Fuck you. And <laughs> <laughs> so all has been restored, and now we pretty much get a where are they now montage. Ah. Palab and Porm continue their studies in the town of Missidia. Village of Missidia, sorry. And what a shame for Cecil. Only lived here in Dissidia. <laughs> Actually, mid tier, really. I wasn't aware there were, there were tiers in Dissidia, to be honest. People will make them up left, right, and sideways. Well, there's tiers for everything, I know that, but. Yeah. Yeah. It means nothing to me, so I just slam them with Jack. Terror has the ultimate range! Yeah, here I come, bitch. <laughs> Doo -doo. Here comes the happy beat! Or as Jack would like to say to Terra and Dissidia, You better not cry! You'll make me uncomfortable! <laughs> Rape-tastic as ever. Oh, those kids. Those kids. Those pesky 12-year-olds. Actually, I think Paolo and Paul are pretty fucking young in this game. They're kids. No, I mean like really young though, like... Barely eight years old, I think it was? Hmm. And yet the elders sent him to a magical mountain, monsterful, monsterful mountain. What's your, what, I guess, quick, quick question. What do you think? Because we didn't really get into this when the giant of Babu uh, first materialized. What do you think about the whole like Palin and Porn being unpetrified by the elder, even though we tried our best to do that ourselves to no avail? Like, what did the elder do? Having played, having played Final Fantasy IX, super soft, super soft, but that wasn't established at all. Off screen. <laughs> Supersoft just sort of came out of fucking nowhere in the middle of Final Fantasy IX as well. There you go. Kind of cheapens the death, though. Yeah, like they were really going to kill eight-year-olds. Hey, man, we nuked the village earlier in the game. <laughs> but we saved the eight-year-old. All the grown but, adults with summons died, but the eight-year-old survived. You don't know there's any other children inside the village of Mist before we nuked it. Exactly. Because Radio's probably the last one. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> All virgins. <laughs> I'm just pulling shit completely out my ass here. I enjoy I know nothing of what I'm talking about, just pulling shit out of my ass. By the way, in case you people forgot, the uh, bearded man is a giant four-ton water snake, and the woman <laughs> is a three-faced bipolar psycho bitch. Sprite limitations. Oh, well. The radio's spending her, the rest of her days in the Fae March, which means that, you know... She's going to die before... <laughs> she's going to die at a very, very young age. Mentally. This, the flow of time was never really... I can never really grasp the flow of time in the Fae March. I always thought it was seven years for seven minutes. I wasn't... I'm not exactly sure itself. All I do know is that Rydia does come back in the sequel, The After Years, and she doesn't look any much older than what she does now. I kind of thought she and left it, the Fae March. that was like 15 to 16 years later. Anyway, Jan got to take over the throne of Fabul because, frankly, he's got the best stash. Yeah. 
Co come see him in the sequel where it grows out into a magnificent beard. That's not even a beard, dude. This is like Fu Manchu to the extreme. Dude. But all the same, with a stash like that... It's, it's a stash that's grown so long it is a beard. <laughs> it's a stash that's grown so long it could be its own zip line. Yeah. <laughs> he uses the whip. <laughs> How do I like my behemoth steak? Breathing! <laughs> The king has been demoted to Duke Consort. He demoted himself. Yeah. Well, he didn't really do shit when we were defending the kingdom of Habu. Sure he did. He sucked and died. Uh, no, he didn't die at all. Oh. He sucked and <laughs> died. What are we looking at? <laughs> <laughs> the ghost. Anyway, here's Edward doing Edward things. Edward. <laughs> he blinks and lets the old woman do the repair, you Listen, fucking Listen, I'm very person. OCD. We need to fix this pillar right on the left so it matches the one on the right. Please. <laughs> Your paladin song. A paladin song. Mm -hmm. huh. I sing of the song of Cecil, the lonely fucking jinx. <laughs> he turned the friendly antlion against me, oh that beast that never blinks. <laughs> That's it? Yeah, it's a work in progress. <laughs> yeah, it's still a work in progress. <laughs> Actually, if you look... If you look uh, that and I can't think of a rhyme for Golbez. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably going to be the second line. Uh, we've got most foul fiend Golbez. Oh, name I cannot rhyme with Golbez. <laughs> there, there you go. It, it counts. <laughs> so I was rebuilding the king of Damsian. And the rest of these guys are going to stay underground? Yeah, well, they're rebuilding the castle themselves. They realize the king's a lazy fucking oaf, but they're out of materials. So the king suggests they scrap the tanks because there's not going to be any more wars. Or your knife. <laughs> Well, when you think about it, the dwarves are really the only thing that's down here, aside from the occasional fiends they can handle, so... Uh, I, I guess so. What about the random encounters? Like I said, they can probably handle them themselves. Without tanks? Without tanks. You handle them just fine, why can't they? We're not... We're not ordinary. <laughs> Neither are they. For Christ's sake, they keep yelling lolly ho. <laughs> and anybody who does that is not quite the same in my books. <laughs> One thing I was never really clear with the doors are there other fla other faces? Are they completely black? Like, or are they just burnt? Probably burnt. They're right near lava, for Christ's well, sake. I guess so. And who's this dapper fellow? It's Kane. Cecil, Rosa. I cannot bring myself to face you both, especially at your wedding. I'm sending you this letter to let you know that I can't find my helmet, and I'm wondering if I left it in your bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> so Kane tries to hide himself, because in reality, he doesn't want to see his two best friends get married and be left in the cold. But I, but he still went to the moon, and that was bitching. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> what is it, Hank? <laughs> <laughs> You have to see this. The moon. Damn it, that's a rock. <laughs> Somebody cleared off the telescope. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, considering how big the fucking telescope is, a rock would look like a moon. So basically, apparently the two moons, one was Lunarian fake moon and the other was our moon. Yeah. A concept we'll see again in Final Fantasy IX. Terra. Well, no, Terra was only... No, Terra was... No, I, I got that backwards. Oops. Yeah. I was thinking moon and then the other planet was a different yeah, planet. Yeah, that was a completely different planet. Wow, boy, am I fucking... Is my brain not working for a while? I thought you'd love Nine, Matt. I do. Doesn't mean I can't forget shit. And hey, don't you dare yell at me, son, I am disappointed. <laughs> because we'll just go right back 10 to 15 minutes and watch you constantly summon. On a boss you just told us all, do not summon! <laughs> what? Zeromus. Zeromus? No, I said Zeromus counters everything with counters summoning with flair. Yeah, and you kept doing it. I said my flaw was not knowing when to stop. Exactly. And I said, I thought, I'm not saying don't do it completely. No, lay on the damage. <laughs> Fuck Zeromus. And so, to cap it all off, Cecil and Rosa are to be wed. Can't afford the king size bed, though. Cecil's a bed winner. <laughs> what? Oh, that's right. You we do seven. remember that Cecil's a colossal jinx. So. What? For God's Oh, by the king size, the kingdom explodes. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is the same kid who threw a rock down a well and ended up blowing up a fucking continent. Hey, that process. was an explosive rock. What an explosive rock of that caliber? Yeah. Okay. 
Fuck yeah. Mm. <laughs> Besides, his bad luck plays it off later in his life, too, when he has Theodore. How's that bad luck? He just had a kid. Yeah, it's named Theodore. And it does... It's, huh? a, com it's a combination of Cecil and Theodore. And it also manages to create the after years. So, no. <laughs> well, if anything... Well, if I, if I could just say something for the after years as a whole, like, I I, I don't mind a sequel to 4, really, because, you know, I do love 4. Mm. But the after years always kind of opened up the concept of, do they ever plan on making sequels to other Final Fantasies? It all started with 10-2. 2 10 2 needed an editor, because in all out honesty, there was a great thing, there was a lot of potential 10 2 had to explore, but the developers stared right into the abyss, and they blinked. Yeah. They just fucking panicked. And then they ended up shitting on their work. Look, well, I, I said earlier, I was like, I love Tenzu from a gameplay perspective, but when you look at the story, you know, it shits all over Ten's ending. Well, more or less, yeah, but it ain't even regarding Ten's ending. It's more like it tries to introduce a whole bunch of things. Like, it, it would have been interesting to see how Spear would have grown finally being free from Cthulhu Moby Dick. And some elements do that very well, yeah. and some don't. But do we really need the plot of, I want to get Titus back? I'd rather we just focus on the growth of spirit and nothing else. You could do that if you just choose the bad ending, which I think does also make very good sense as well. Yeah, but that's, it's still, no, but I'm talking about the whole purpose of Ten Two story. The ten, the purpose of Ten Two story was not to see the growth. At first, Ten Two story was to get Titus back, and because she saw the spirit that thought about it. And it always it. is. Right, but if you go for the bad ending, yeah, no, you, no, it no, shows no, you no, moving on. Yeah, obviously you can do that, but that's still a rather haphazard like, story. Well, I'm talking about, like, the main focus of Ten Two was never about the growth of Spirit. It was always about this one woman who wants to get his boyfriend back. No, we were seeing the growth of Spirit. It was not about the growth yeah, of Spirit. Yeah, but that was completely secondhand. That wasn't the main focus of Ten Two. Right, but it could have been, but they yeah, didn't. that's what I wanted. That's what I'm saying. Well, who would have said Spirit would have completely grown? It's sort of like, if, if there's one thing I could praise Tales of Symphonia Dawn of the New World for, is that it showed a realistic depiction that just because you fixed one of the hugest problems the world had, it didn't necessarily mean everything was going to be for the better. Apparently, people are completely stupid enough to get themselves blown the fuck up left, right, and sideways. In ten minutes, we'll be bringing in the liquor. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Edge comes in. I'm the liquor. <laughs> mm. High fives, everybody! <laughs> Ow! Oh, no! <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if we were playing the original Final Fantasy IV, I would say, and that is the end of the Final Fantasy IV Let's Play, ladies and gentlemen, but we are playing the advanced PSP version of the game, which has an optional dungeon that opens up after you beat the game. So we're going to do that. But not yet. Not just yet. You know, we're going to take a small break from four until I have all of the footage of the Lunar Ruins up and ready to go. For a few reasons. One, the Lunar Ruins can kick your ass if you are not statistically prepared. We're fine from an armor standpoint, but okay. level-wise, I don't think I can do it just yet. What about status magics? Do they work in there? Say what? Status magics. Status magics? Yeah. Something I'll have to experiment with. Yeah, because, like I said, once I beat Final Fantasy IX roughly two times over, I started experimenting with a lot of status magics, and you can get a lot of good use out of them. But another reason... The Lunar Ruins is a randomly generated dungeon. In between each trial for each... Because, uh... The Lunar Ruins contains trials for each character. There's a trial for Cecil, so on, all, all so forth. In between each trial are randomly generated floors, so you really don't know what the hell you're gonna get. It's like a box of chocolates. But, in order to open up the trials for certain characters, you have to beat Zeromus with that character. Okay. So the, Lunar, so the Lunar Ruins right now only has the trials open for Cecil, Kane, Rydia, Rosa, and Yang. If you, need, if you want the trials to be open for everyone else, you have to bring them to the Lunar Subterrain and beat Zeromus with them. Which means you have to beat Zeromus a total of three times to completely open up the Lunar Ruins. You know, let it be said that we do love the older Final Fantasies to the newer ones, but they still aren't, they, they weren't perfect either. No. Well, no, I, I blame, this is, this is a feature that was advanced in the 2005 re-release of 4. Someone wasn't right in the head. That's really stupid. Yeah. I'd rather just have all the ruins open up after we beat the game the first time. It's an optional dungeon. Why the hell do I need to go out of my way to go to an optional dungeon? You know? But that is the last thing we have left to do 
to complete this let's play ladies and gentlemen the same i could say about 13 in a way like why is it that i'm not why is it that the marks are really tough enough that i gotta actually unlock the level 10 crystarium grid that i need to do it which i can only get by beating the game yeah that should be the end of my journey right there but but if you do not you know what in all honesty i find that i find four far less offensive than i did with 13 in that regard yeah Basically because I think I just enjoyed the ride through four more, but, but regardless of which, though, it's that I still do find it really stupid that you gotta keep beating the game repeatedly with a different party member in order to unlock their trial. Yeah. It, it may make some degree of sense because, you know, hey, the final char your character beat the final boss. You have to travel through the subterranean all over again just to get to Zeromas and beat the game with that character. Right. It's a case of, it may sound like a good idea in the head from a concept perspective, but ultimately it's just fucking tedious. Yeah. And that's my that's my, that's really the only issue I have with it. Other than that, though, well, we're gonna see what's gonna happen. But if you do not care about the Lunar Ruins, ladies and gentlemen, then you can technically stop watching the Let's Play from here. You know, because I mean, this is technically the end of the game. See the end right there. Tell us right there. So where are the Olmec? So where are the Lunar Ruins at? They're Let's right ask here. Olmec. Okay, Olmec, please tell us where the kids need to go through in order to get to the Lunar Ruins. Well, first they have you to climb start. through the caves. You could start the mountain side on the lunar side. <laughs> <laughs> but you sunk the lunar whale. You're <laughs> fucked now. As you can see, the lunar ruins have now opened. The paladin's doors uh, seal's been broken. The white mage's seal's been broken. The dragoon's seal's been broken. The summoner's seal's been broken. And the monk's seal's been broken. You get this message every time you clear Zeromus with the other with the other corresponding character. Are you sure you just can't bring in Yang? <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't open. We can't bust through the door with this uh, magnificent mustache, Matt. You're not trying hard enough. I, You're not thinking what mustaches. Maybe not. You're not thinking what mustaches. We're but gonna, that'll pretty much be it for Final Fantasy IV. Save the optional just stuff. Just for now, I give it about. Give us about. I'm not sure how long this break's gonna last. I'll give it about two weeks, just so I can get the footage ready to go. Because the Lunar Ruins, again, we, there's a lot to do in the Lunar Ruins, ladies and gentlemen. We have a whole plethora of bosses to fight. Inside the Lunar Ruins is not only... We have two super bosses inside the Lunar Ruins, too, which I intend on beating. I hope you do. Uh, well, thank you, Matt. I will try, <laughs> because... Because, you know, you make a promise here, I've and then only you fall done, short on it. I've only done the Lunar Ruins once, and that was in the advanced release of Final Fantasy IV. Ah. I never really did it on the PSP. It's the same game, I know, but still, you know. But anyway, ladies I and gentlemen... I anything, I just said, ah. Thank you for watching. We'll see you guys when we traverse through the Lunar Ruins soon.